Well, I'm excited for part seven of our journey through 2 Corinthians. And have you ever gotten to the end of a movie and then sit and watch all the credits? Our family does this. We go to the movie theater and sometimes we're the last people in the movie theater. and We're watching all those credits roll down. And if you get to the end of a lot of movies, you'll find out that Georgia is represented in a lot of movies anymore because so much is filmed here. But there's another reason that we, we kind of sit through it. One, it's fun to look at some of the names that are on there. Sometimes there's some crazy names. I mean, we're talking hundreds of people that produce a movie. But the other thing is for that post credit scene, when the credits are all done and then there, you get rewarded with this scene. Now, sometimes the scene is kind of funny. Sometimes it has absolutely nothing to do with the movie you just watched. Sometimes it might be outtakes. Or if you get the Marvel series, you know, you, you sometimes get a little foreshadowing to what's to come. Well, that's kind of what Paul has done here. He has given us a little bit of a teaser of what's to come in our lives. If you remember last week, I titled the message Fragile. And he told us how our lives are like jars of clay. That, they, that, they're, that they're easily broken, they're fragile. Um, we even read that our, our lives are kind of like a vapor or fog. It's here now, but it's gone very quickly. We live very fragile lives. They're short. But there's a hope beyond that. And that's a little bit of what Paul goes into in this. He gives us a little teaser of what's to come, what to expect, especially with these fragile jars of clay, these bodies that we're in, you know, with COVID and all this other stuff that's going on, you know, in my household alone, uh, Pastor Jennifer having a broken ankle and foot, our bodies are fragile. Every time we go out, something could happen. We never know how much time we have that's why we give everything we have to God. That's why we don't take a moment for granted. Well, Paul wants to encourage us a little bit. He wants to give us a little foreshadowing of the future. And so we're going to be looking at chapter 5 today. And I'm going to jump right into this. And he gives us this little teaser. Our first point today is new bodies. We are promised new bodies. Now, as you get older, for some of us, I had a birthday recently, 48 years old. I'm proud of 48. I don't have a problem with it. You know why? Because I'm probably in the best shape I've been in 20 years. And I'm absolutely excited. I love to go mountain biking. I love to run. I love to physically challenge my body. I feel good. To a point. I went mountain biking the other day and you know, it's bumpy and, and the shocks aren't real good on my bike. And when I got up the next morning, Guess what? I realized I'm 48 years old and my lower back was sore and I'm like just kind of hobbling to the bathroom as you kind of wake up and I felt those aches and pains. Or if you've ever went through like a trauma, if you've ever been in a car accident, you may not have gotten physically hurt, but all your muscles tense up and for the next couple days you just, you hurt. Or maybe you, you do have some serious issues in your body. Maybe illness, diabetes, cystic fibrosis, maybe it's arthritis. These bodies are failing. As good as we can take care of them and we can do everything perfect, but eventually these bodies are going to give out. So we're promised new bodies. Have you ever wanted to swap yours out? I've heard some people say that, man, I wish I could just go in and trade mine in and get a new body. Would be pretty neat. Well, you get to do that. It just comes much later. It comes much later in this process. It comes after this life is over. So look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to look at the first four verses for just a minute. It says, For we know that when this earthly tent, this body, he, we call this jars of clay. He's called us a tent, all kinds of things. For we know when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, 
we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we, when, or we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. That's pretty exciting, right? The idea that this life, we talked about that, is not all there is. The disciples knew that. They could endure incredible hardship because they knew that as short as this life was, it's not all there is. But this idea that we're going to have this new body, the one that we live in now is temporary. We might get diseases. We might have different things that come against our body. But when we get before God and when we get to heaven, He's going to give us a new body. That's pretty exciting. I don't know what it'll look like. I don't know if all of a sudden I'm going to have a six-pack and be ripped. and you know, I, Who knows? But I know this. We're not going to grow weary. We're not going to be in pain anymore. We'll be able to do with that body whatever we need to do. And that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited about that. I know as healthy as I can be, some of us are so, we live in such fear that we're going to, to die. I'll be, be completely honest. I take care of my body. This past year, I lost about 40, 45 pounds. Part of that is... Because I realize that, hey, there's heart problems in my family. There's cancer in my family. There's strokes in my family. There's high blood pressure in my family. And if I don't take care of myself, I'm liable to have those things happen to me. But even if I take care of myself, those things could still happen. As perfectly as I could live, I could eat all the right food. I could eat clean. I could eat all that stuff. And this body's still going to break down. Now, I think it's important to eat well. I'm going to do everything in my power to be healthy. Because I want to be here for my kids. I would love to see grandchildren. If God keeps this world together long enough, I'd love to see grandchildren. I think it'd be awesome to sit and play Mario Kart with my grandkids. If Mario Kart even still works at that time. But I think that'd be pretty cool. See their grandpa beat them. Love Mario Kart. But here's the thing. We can do everything right with our bodies, but they're still going to fail. But God has promised us a new body. One that's not going to hurt. One that's not going to have all these crazy hormones running through it that make us feel wacky sometimes. But a new body. We get to look forward to what God has for us. Eternity is a whole lot longer than the 70 or 80 years that we may have on this earth. Some of us are fortunate enough to live to 90, even 100. But there's been plenty of people that don't even make it out of their teen years or in their 20s. Life is so short. So short but we're going to have an eternity in our new bodies. I hope that's encouraging to you. I hope that's something that you look forward to. The second thing is that I want to talk about is Paul did not want to die. Why do you think I point this out? Well, sometimes we get focused on what lies ahead and we can get so caught up with looking ahead that we just want out. And we lose sight of the plans that God has for us here. Yes, Paul suffered greatly in his body. He was beaten and left for dead more than once. He was in prison. I'm sure his body hurt. Even one time, he got bit by a viper. Those are not good things. I am relatively certain that Paul's body did not feel good in the mornings. He knew where he was going for eternity. He knew he would get a new body. 
But he said, yet we do not strive to die. They did not long to die. Now they longed for that new body, but that they did not long to die. Look at this. I'm going to read this again. Look, starting at verse 4, it says, While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of the bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up in life. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not home with the Lord, for we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident and would rather be away from these earthly bodies for they will be at home for them we will be at home with the lord so whether we are here in this body or away from this body our goal is to please him paul can sometimes be confusing in the way he says things i'm going to melt it down for you paul's basically saying look i just want to please god and as long as god keeps me on this earth i'm going to live to please him and if he chooses to take me away from here that's awesome i'm going to be with him That's the perspective. That's why they could endure so much. God gave them a mission to do. God birthed in them a desire for everybody to hear the gospel, for everybody to know what Jesus had done for them. And they were going to do that with everything they had as long as they lived. Even though it hurt, even though they suffered, even though sometimes they didn't have enough food, didn't matter. They knew they were going to have new bodies eventually. And they knew eventually they were going to be in the presence of God. See, death for them was a sweet release into the presence of God. They didn't fear it. It was the reward. Do we live with an eternal perspective? No, I don't long to die. I just told you I want to see my grandkids. I'm believing that someday... My children are going to marry some amazing people. And they're going to produce little grandkids to run around for me to spoil and and fill them with sugar and send them back home. I think that's one of the joys and the pleasures. Every season of life has its own pleasures. And I wouldn't go back to any one of those seasons because each season brings something new. So no, we don't live to die. We live to please God. And when it's our time, God will take us out of here. However that is. But Paul understood that this life is not all that there is. That even though we long to have this new body, even though we long to be in heaven with God, even though we long for those things... Our number one goal is to please God. To live a life that brings Him honor. To live a life that looks at things from a bigger perspective and cares about people. So no, Paul didn't long to die. He just took comfort in knowing that he had new bodies coming. They're on lock. They're on order. The model isn't going to change. We don't get to tweet. It's already coming. Every day we take a new breath, we're one step closer to eternity. I don't know when that's going to be, but I don't fear it either. I'm ready. That's what's exciting. That's the exciting part of the gospel, is that we are ready to be in the presence of God whenever He calls us home. My greatest desire is that everybody that's around me will be there with me as well. I long for my children to know God. And as much as I failed in my house, I hope that they see God in spite of me. I want to see all of you in eternity sporting your new body. I don't know what it's going to look like. I have to believe that we're going to recognize each other. I have no idea what all this will look like. But what I do know is that we're going to have that eventually. So I'm excited about it. 
The next thing is, is it's guaranteed for us by the Holy Spirit. And we've, we've heard this from Paul before. If you look at verse 5, it says, God himself has prepared for us this, and as a guarantee, he has given us the Holy Spirit. God is preparing the new bodies, and he guarantees this by giving us the Holy Spirit. Paul says it's a down payment for what is to come, which is kind of a weird thing to think about, the Holy Spirit being a down payment, because it's the presence of God in our lives. But God has given us the Holy Spirit. He's stamped his seal on us. We are his. When we put our trust in Jesus, when we give our lives to him and say, please forgive me of my sins, wash away that guilt and shame, I want to live for you. God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is for every believer. It's God's active presence on earth. You have God the Father, you have God the Son, you have God the Holy Spirit. Three distinct persons, but one God. Absolutely confusing. One of the coolest illustrations, I didn't bring an egg today, is an egg. You've got, you've got the shell, you've got the white, you've got the yolk. It's still an egg, but there's three distinctive parts. I thought, hey, that's a pretty cool illustration. It's kind of how it is with us, with God. And then He gives us the Holy Spirit to live in our lives. Now, the Holy Spirit doesn't control us. We're not like puppets. We still have free will, but we have God's presence and power in our lives. He helps us to sort through all the stuff and all of the sinful nature and all of that things. Does, it, does He keep us from sinning? No, we still have to make those choices. But the closer we get to God and the more we learn to hear the Holy Spirit's voice within us, the better choices we're going to make. The easier it is. Look, Paul talks about it again in Ephesians, and I hope this maybe will clear it up for you a little bit. Ephesians 1, uh, 13 and 14 says this, And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, He identified you as His own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom He promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that He will give us the inheritance He promised and that He has purchased us to be His own people. He did this so that we would praise and glorify Him. We are identified by others and by God through the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's what guarantees us our inheritance. So don't freak out about the Holy Spirit. There have been some, the enemy has duped Christians over a few generations to fear the Holy Spirit because the baptism of the Holy Spirit and there's special gifts that come with that, with people speaking in tongues and when, with people being able to pray for people and them to be healed and discernment and all these gifts that come, these supernatural gifts that come through the Holy Spirit, people have been like freaked out, like, whoa, what's going on? But the truth is, is in God possessing us, He's gifting us and empowering us to reach others. Those gifts have one purpose, not to enhance me, but to give me the ability to reach others with the gospel. Every gift is so that others can come to know Him. That's God's number one goal is to make us look more like Him and then for others to come to Him. He wants to redeem all mankind. Every single one of us. So we, we have the promise of a new body. We know this life isn't all that we have. And then we've been given the Holy Spirit as an installment, as a power boost as kind of a leveling up in our lives so that we can live for God in ways we never dreamed possible. If you like to play video games, I'm gonna go back to Mario for just a minute. And I know this is a loose illustration, but if you've ever played Mario Brothers and you go, what happens when you like get a mushroom or if you get flower power or whatever 
you get those things and they make you bigger and they give you special powers. It's kind of like the Holy Spirit coming in our lives, except for we don't lose the Holy Spirit like Mario or Luigi lose the power when they get hit by a Goomba. We don't lose that. And I know for some of you, you're like, what is he even talking about? But there's others that know what I'm talking about when I talk about Mario. The Holy Spirit gives us that leveling up, that supernatural power in our lives, the supernatural power to make decisions, that, that sealing of our lives. I could not make it through this life without the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. It's not possible. I need God's presence in my life. I seek it out. I ask God daily to fill me with His Spirit. I ask God daily to lead and guide me. It's not a one-time deal. It's a daily thing. It's the first thing I do in the morning. All throughout the New Testament, we see the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through the lives of the new believers. We told you that in Acts 2, when the, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, man... They spoke in tongues, 3,000 people got saved, but it gave them great boldness. That's what Acts 1.8 talks about, the boldness that comes through the Holy Spirit. He gives us discernment, helps us to know when we need to back off and when we need to move forward. And the closer we get to God, the more we learn to hear His voice and understand. That seal, that power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. This is the same Spirit, and the reason I'm bringing this up this is the same Spirit that, rose G, or that brought Jesus back from the dead. Romans tells us that. So if God's given us new bodies, He already did it for Jesus. He was the first one. He's going to do it for us as well. Romans 8.11 says this, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. The same Spirit of God who raised free Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. That's pretty awesome. The Spirit of God that rose Jesus from the dead is dwelling in us. He's dwelling in you. Now, I'm going to say this. If you are not a follower of Christ, He's not living in you. If you are not a follower of Christ, He's not living in you. That is a gift given to us as believers. See, that's what's pretty exciting about this message. This message is for believers. If you're not a believer, this message could be for you if you will yield your life to Him. you'll just say, Jesus, I, I need you. I can't do this on my own. I'm sinful. I'm broken. Please forgive me and fill my life. That's where it begins. Then we spend the rest of our lives trying to become more like Him. Not like other Christians. We're all on that same journey, and some of us do it better than others. But to be like Jesus, to love everyone with compassion. We just started on Sunday nights, Everybody Always, by Bob Goff, and it's about loving everybody the way Jesus loved people, no matter whether we liked them or not. No, whether we, no matter whether we think they deserve that love or not. But to love them because Jesus asked us to. It's huge. It's huge. The Holy Spirit's key of all of this. All throughout the New Testament, you can even go back to the Old Testament, the Spirit of God in our lives is key. It's not something for us to be afraid of or to shy away from. It's key for us to be able to follow Christ, for us to be able to make it through this life. I have one last point today. What we do in these bodies matter. If you remember earlier, Paul said that his main goal was not to die, but to get to heaven 
and to please God. See, we are to please God with the way we live our lives. I'm afraid that we've sowed some bad doctrines in the church that said, you know what? We've taught about the grace of God, and that's awesome. But we've skipped out on holiness. We've skipped out on pushing people to get rid of the sin in their lives and to become holy, to follow after God, to seek to be like Him. We kind of view it as a get out of free, out of hell free card. Like, oh man, I stamped that one. I said that prayer. Now I'm a believer. I go to church once every quarter. Occasionally I put money in the offering. I'm good to go with God. I'm just going to sit back on cruise control until I can get that new body. Now what we do in this life matters. I think when we come to Christianity out of what we can get, instead of out of having a relationship with God, I think that we're going to be the ones that are sadly mistaken or, I don't know, when we stand before God, I want to hear, well done. I don't want to hear, great job praying the prayer back 20 years ago. I want to hear, well done. You did a great job with what I gave you. It's kind of like the parable of the talents where I didn't have it in my notes, but we were kind of talking about this before we started tonight. You know, the, the master gave each of the people according to their, their skills, and, and a couple of them took what they were given and, and doubled it, and giving them some money. But one who was given the least was afraid that he would lose it, so he buried it, did nothing with it. When the master came back, he said, well done to those that used what was given to them. But to the one that did nothing with it, he said, get away from me, you wicked servant. Now, we weren't created just to make it to heaven. We were created to live an active and vibrant relationship with God, reaching others, living out our fullest potential. I believe that Christianity is an adventure. I, all Man, most of the things that I wanted to do as a kid, I've gotten to do since I've came to Christ. I've gotten to travel. I've gotten to play music. I've got to do so many things that have been a part of just my DNA. I cannot express how much joy God has given me in following Him. Is there pain? Absolutely. And there's times where I've struggled greatly. But I wouldn't trade it for anything. This adventure that God's put me on, I can't wait to see how it ends. The people that God's brought into my life because of following Him. Some of you, well, all of you really, you're a part of me, you're a part of my life. That I wouldn't have got had I not followed Jesus. Actually, I often wonder if I'd even be alive right now if I hadn't followed Jesus. The path that I was on was destructive. And I'm thankful for what Jesus has done. What we do in our bodies matter. Look at verses 9 and 10 real quick. So, so whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please Him. We read that already, but look at this. It says, For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. Think about that for a minute. We're still going to be judged. There's actually a couple different judgments that happen after this life. One is the judgment where we come before God and see if our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. 
which as believers in Christ and followers of Christ, our name is written in that book. If it's not, then we're cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. Eternal damnation. Eternal separation from all that's good. You know, if you've ever listened to, you know, some music like uh, ACDC, you know, talking about being on the highway to hell, there's going to be a party in hell and all those things because that's where all my friends are going to be. And I know that was an ACDC that talked about that. I forget who was. But those were things when I was younger. Those were popular songs. But the truth is, hell is eternal separation from God and everything that's good. Eternal separation from the presence of God. All love is wiped out. Isolation. That's not what I want for my life. This isn't meant to scare you into heaven. It's just reality. God wants us to have relationship with Him. That's His number one goal. But God can't inhabit with sin. That's why He sent Jesus. And what we do with this life matters. So once we become believers, I want to hear, well done. I don't want to hear, well, you sat in a pew or a chair and listened to a lot of messages. I want to hear well done. Okay. What we do in this life matters. How we live this life matters. I want to hear well done. I don't want to stand before God and give an account for my time and be like that servant that took the talents that he gave me and just buried them and did nothing with them. If you're feeling conviction by this, good. Good. Man, I want nothing more than the Word of God to convict your heart right now. Because I believe if the church would stand up and use the talents and the gifts and the abilities and the finances that God's given them, there is nothing that would stop the church in this world. But the problem is... We have so many spectators and not a lot of workers. God only gave us so much time. These fragile bodies have an expiration date. And we're going to have all eternity to enjoy new bodies. Doing what? I don't know. God just said it's the most amazing place beyond what we could imagine. I want to give everything I have to Him. Yeah, I still get to do fun things. I still get to go mountain biking. I love to do so much. But my number one goal in my life is to please God and to do His work. And you know what? When I do His work, I'm fulfilled in ways that I could never imagine. I get joy. I get energized when we do our food bank and I get to spend time with people. I get energized when I go downtown with my friends and, and deliver food off the back of motorcycles to people that are strung out on heroin and, and methamphetamines and living under bridges, smell like urine, haven't had a bath in a month or two. I get energized because I get to share the love of God with them, not to puff me up, but because I'm using something that I have for them. Give God our best. We're going to be held accountable for what we do with this life. Now, I know most of you that are watching this. I know some that will watch because they're checking us out.
If you stand before God with your life and give an account of what you've done and who you are, are you okay? Are you okay with the, between you and God? If not, you have an opportunity today. The Holy Spirit is knocking on your heart right now, asking to come in. It's surrendering to that. That uncomfortable feeling that you feel right now is the Holy Spirit wanting to come in. Now look, as believers, we're covered by the blood of Jesus. We don't have to fear the judgment, but I want to hear well done. If you're not a believer, you need to fear that judgment. You need to fear that judgment. Romans 2, 6 through 10 says this, He will judge everyone according to what they have done. He will give eternal life to those who keep doing, on doing good, seeking after the glory and honor and immortality that God offers. But He will pour out His anger and wrath on those who live for themselves, who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness. There will be trouble and calamity for everyone who keeps on doing what is evil. For the Jew first and also for the Gentile, but there will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who do good, for the Jew first and also for the Gentile. Now, doing doesn't earn our way into heaven. That's only by the grace of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. But we are rewarded for those things that we do when we honor God with our lives. This is where I want you to land on this. I'm going to wrap all this up. First of all, we're going to have new bodies. That's pretty exciting. Second, He's given us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. Third, we need to use our lives for the glory of God. Not just bury them in the ground and wait till the end. I've mentioned this many times during quarantine, and I, I know a lot of things are opened up, but a lot of us are still staying at home and a little bit back and forth. Satan has done a good job of trying to separate and isolate us and think that and get us into a mindset that we can't do anything. But the truth is, whether we're at home in quarantine because maybe we're sick or maybe we just are afraid of getting sick, we can still use what we have to reach other people. We can text and call and encourage people. We can do Bible studies through YouVersion. We can jump on Zoom and, and, and join in prayer and join in Bible studies. We can encourage others to come to Christ. You can invite your friends, share these videos, and allow them to hear the gospel of, of Jesus. You never know what one message might draw somebody else in. Use what you have. Don't bury it. Strive to please God and to stand before Him one day and hear, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. One thing I love the most about our church is that God called us to serve and love our community. Not everybody comes to every event, but most of the things we do, each of you have different things that you're a part of, and that makes me proud. I want to see us grow and can cultivate that culture into other people so that we can impact this community with the love of Jesus. I want to pray with you today as we close out. One, 
first. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, now's the time. If you need to pause the video, whatever you need to do, now is the time. Get that relationship with Jesus. You don't know when your last breath will be. These bodies are fragile. Seek after Him. He's not looking for perfection. He's looking for an open heart to come to Him. To be in relationship with Him. No matter where you're at, you don't have to be perfect to come to church. You don't have to have everything together. And you'll have a group of people that will love and support you. Second, if you're feeling conviction about what you're doing with your life, pray right now and ask the Holy Spirit, one, to fill you, and two, to show you where you can do more or what you can do with what you have. Some of you are doing so much, he might be telling you to back up a little bit. That's okay. We want to follow him. I want to pray for you today. Just as you spend a few minutes, we're going to give you just a couple seconds. Begin to pray. Wherever you're at, if you need Jesus, begin to cry out to him right now. You can click on the prayer thing if you want somebody to pray with you. Our host will pray with you. For the rest of us, just ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Thank him for the new bodies that are coming. And then ask him, what can I do for you today, Jesus? How can I follow you today? What do you have for my life today? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for everybody that's on this video. Lord, I pray right now for those that need to know that they have a relationship with you. Lord, I pray that you would help them to surrender their lives to you. Lord, I ask that you would forgive them of their sins and that you would fill them with, their Holy, with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray for those of us that are followers of you, that we would be filled daily with your Holy Spirit, that we would live our lives in such a way that we honor you, that we will hear well done, that the billboards that are our lives will attract others to you. And Father, I ask for your grace and mercy upon us. Go before us in all that we do. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. And again, if you need somebody to pray with you, please click. And our host will pray with you. And it will be a private conversation. Thanks for watching.